The VKP's Dex Throttle, even in its Phase 1 form, is bringing Deadens to a new level. Using any combination of the 5 provided Deadent modules in 5 Deadent frames, user customized and configured Deadent presets can be swapped in and out in a matter of seconds so that you can curate the best flight experience for you. The 5 Deadent shapes are as follows. W, with a hold in the center. L, with a short asymmetrical bump. Tall L, with a taller asymmetrical bump. V, with a short centered bump. And Tall V, with a taller centered bump. Any deadens can be installed on any frame, with up to three deadens on a single frame, and travel loss compensation being applied through VKB DEFCON FAKE. The profile-based travel loss compensation is switched using the selector dial in grey button, and its status can be seen on the long deadent profile LED, all of which will be elaborated on further into the video. Take a look at the relevant throttle inputs as well as the frame-to-profile legend on the right here. The Stex has three knurled thumb screws at the top of the base. The side ones are for tuning the dampener for each grip, while the middle one is for frame swapping, like with the high quality dampeners on the GNX and Gunfighter joystick. The feel of the Stex with fully released dampeners is very light, but the feel of the Stex with fully engaged dampeners has lots of resistance. Let's get back to that middle thumb screw. Fully removing the screw allows you to lift out the denant frame to swap in a different one. Before we put in a different frame though, we should probably install some denants on it. When building out your denant frame, we recommend starting off along an end of the frame. Prepare your denant by inserting the screw through it and then placing it aside. Place your nut into the frame's hollow, sliding in just enough so the screw hole can be accessed through the slot, and keep it in place with a finger. You can see here why we suggest you begin your denant installation from the end, as jamming your finger into the deepest part of the hollow would be painful bordering on unfeasible. Screw your denant into the nut about halfway so that they're threaded into each other while not being tightened down. From this point, you can now slide the deadant to the desired position before screwing it fully together and tightening it down onto the frame. While we're at it, we might as well install deadants on some other frames. In this demo, we've installed a V deadant onto the white frame, so let's install an L deadant onto the red frame. Again, try loosely installing the deadant along one of the ends of the deadant frame and then sliding it into place. When installing a frame onto the throttle base, make sure it's properly positioned and aligned before inserting and tightening down the thumb screw. Now that we have a frame with deadens installed on the throttle, we should configure the travel loss compensation in VKB Dev config. Navigate to the Profile section at the bottom of the window and then the new Deadens panel above. Notice that there are five Deadens set tabs corresponding to the five different Deadens frames with three Deadens slots per frame. You saw a glimpse of this earlier, but let's walk through it fully now. Each tab has a different fill color on the throttle gauge for easy identification. Since we're setting up the white frame, let's use set number two as it has the white fill color. We'll be using the setup wizard to automatically configure the Deadens. Click the wizard button beside the 1, and in this case, only deadent to begin. In the dialog box, select the deadent type. We're using a V deadent for the demo though, so we'll be selecting the V-shaped option. After selecting the deadent shape, just click anywhere inside the graphic to proceed. From here, we'll continue to follow the instructions on screen. Move the throttle grip so they touch the lower side of the deadent, and then click the next button. Push through the deadent, and then set the throttle grips right on the other side of the deadent before pressing the finish button. Pressing the Set button in VKB DevConfig's Action tab at the top applies the changes to the device's internal memory. While we're here, let's set this white frame as the default profile for the throttle so that it uses this deadent set on boot. 
click the Make Active button under set number 2 in the dev config. Of course, if you've been following along using a different deadend frame, do this action for whatever set you're using instead. You'll see now as the stacks reboots that the deadend set you defaulted is applied as seen by the color of the long deadend LED, in our case, white for set number 2. By calibrating the deadends, the software is now applying a curve to the throttle's travel that compresses the space outside of the deadend. You can see this in action in the software throttle gauge. Notice how the black arrows and red arrows are no longer synced up. The black arrows display the raw data from the sensors, while the red arrows show the throttle readings being sent to your game of choice. The numerical readings for each can be seen along the top and bottom of the gauge, raw at the top, direct input on the bottom. The compression is applied only as much as needed to compensate for the travel loss to the deadend, making it so the bump over the deadend is not translated in-game. If you'd like, you can also set up a custom curve per deadend. For this example, we'll be setting a custom curve, or CRV, at 85% while the physical deadend is at 65%. What this means essentially is that the curve will skew to the point that 65% along the physical throw of the throttle will translate to 85% in game. The travel between 0 and 65 on the physical throttle arc will be stretched digitally, while the travel between 65 and 100 on the physical arc will be compressed digitally. CRVs are very useful for users who want to modify a portion of the craft's engine behavior, like in the context of a wider combat power range, or even for quick swapping of crafts in-game. Make sure to click the set button again to apply your CRV to the throttle. Within the deadens panel, you can also set up virtual buttons to trigger along the throttle's axis using the event row. To set this up, assign a pair of unassigned buttons to the two throttle grips. After selecting the desired left axis button by arrowing or entering into the L button field, the right axis will automatically assign to the button following. For this example, we'll use 65 in 66. Commit the changes with the set button as always. The event dropdown has various options for what event causes the buttons to trigger. The equals equals option makes the buttons trigger only when the throttle is within the dead and dead zone. The greater lesser option makes the buttons trigger only when the throttle is outside the dead and dead zone. The greater equals option makes the buttons trigger when the throttle is within the deadened dead zone or between the deadened and the end of the axis range. The lesser equals option makes the buttons trigger when the throttle is within the deadened dead zone or between the deadened and the start of the axis range. The greater option makes the buttons trigger only when the throttle is between the upper edge of the deadened and the end of the axis range. And the lesser option makes the buttons trigger only when the throttle is between the lower edge of the deadened and the start of the axis rain. Mm. 
now that we've customized and configured our white frame, profile number 2, let's do the same for the red frame we installed at Dedenton earlier. Do note that this whole setup procedure is only required for the first time setting up a new frame. Once a frame has been saved, it can be loaded on the fly using inputs on the throttle base. Of course, you will have to go through at least some of the setup steps again if you changed around the dents on the frame. The steps are all the same for setting up this new frame. We'll have to navigate to the correct set tab for this frame. As we're using a red frame, we'll be working in set number 5. As with the first frame and deadent we configured, click the wizard button next to the deadent and follow the instructions on screen. While we had just set our white frame as default for the stacks, let's say that we're going to be using the red frame primarily going forward. So let's click the Make Active button on our current set, set number 5. After a quick device reboot, set red number 5 is now the default profile and will apply upon device boot going forward. Now that we have multiple configured frames, let's swap between our different setups using just hardware inputs. Press and hold the grey button under the selector dial, and then switch the selector to the desired profile, referring to the number the selector is pointed to and the color of the denim profile LED to locate the correct denim set. Upon releasing the grey button, the new profile becomes active. You'll know whether or not the profile you've selected is valid or not, depending on the denim LED's status. If the denim set color is displaying as a solid light, then the profile is ready for use. But, if the dent set color is flashing, then the profile hasn't been initialized yet. As we've only set up the red and white profiles in this demo, you'll notice that the blue and green profiles will be flashing. The no color position on the selector corresponds to the default black frame, which does not allow the usage of custom denons. With your newly configured fleet of denon frames and software profiles, you'll be swapping between crafts or games in a matter of seconds. There's no time like the present.